Hi, it's Katie and my channel is Is It Just Me? And today I wanna to go down a little bit deeper into this rabbit hole with the rate cuts. And more specifically, like just make it, just what is the whole point of it? What Does it help us, the consumer? Does it help the average American? Or does it help big business? What is the point of the rate cut? And why is it like everywhere? Like it sounds like, oh, the economy is doing great. So we're going to do these rate cuts. So let me go into a little bit about what I've learned and my understanding of it. And if you can just understand certain basic principles, like I don't know a great deal about the stock market or all these details, but I do understand. And I've been kind of watching the different things that cause it to go up and down. And one thing that I've realized in my different research and different learning is I have kind of stopped getting wrapped up into that, like trying to understand it, listening to different, you know, influencers try to tell you, you know, how to do this and that with your money. The basic principle of everything to me that you need to understand is that it is basically rigged. And if you understand how it is rigged and how they use it to benefit them, then it can benefit you. The problem is, is that a lot of these people have a lot of money and so they can really get into these highs and lows and profit significantly. The average person cannot. So let me go into more specifically about these cuts. So the way that it works and the whole reason why the government does these cuts is because you know, they sit there and they say it's, you know, for us, the consumer, it lowers, it lowers interest rates and it helps, you know, homes be more affordable. Quite the opposite. When interest rates drop, especially on um, housing, you're going to see that the value of the houses are going to go up because people see that. They see the interest rate come down. It increases buyers in the market. So people are like, oh, I can get a house at a cheaper rate. Um, so it gets exciting and then people start trying to buy homes, which is a supply and demand. So as soon as there's more people buying these homes, the cost of the home goes up. And it was funny. I was listening to, um, one of my guys and he made a great point. He goes, even if you have to buy when the, and this is something like the average person would never think of, or at least you specifically me and my experience, the average person does not think to buy when interest rates are high because it's not affordable. You're going to have to pay so much more. The thing is, is that you can refi. So if the interest rates are high, a lot of times the demand is going to come out of the market, right? Because people can't afford the interest rates. They're not going to try to buy. And when you do that, then like basically what he was saying is if interest rates are high, it is a great opportunity to buy because the house value is not going to be as high. The demand is not going to be there. So the house will actually be more affordable. And he goes, and with the way the government works, doing increases and decreases and whatever, you just write it out, whether it's six months or a year, and then you're able to refinance that loan and get that interest rate. And meanwhile, you secured it at a lower rate. So it's just something to think about. I don't know, I'd have to run the numbers and it have to be a purchase of my own for me to see how that would benefit and how that would play out. But it's kind of like where you start to reverse your thinking and looking at the opportunity maybe a little bit differently, looking at it more and you know, buying now and looking at the long-term benefit of it, which is basically what they do, right? So I veered off a little bit. Let me get back on track to where I'm going with this. So interest rates, they say benefit the consumer. Well, the reason why it will benefit us is because it allows us to take on more debts at a lower rate is the idea, right? So it increases our motivation to take out more debt. It does not benefit us. Debt does not benefit us because the average person doesn't know what to do with debt. Debt is a chain around our like necks because it just is there. We are trying to pay it off, but meanwhile, we're paying tons of interest. So the debt is not good for us. Um, and that's where I like the one guy, uh, Ramsey Jordan, no, whatever his name is, Ramsey, he talks about, you know, not having debt and paying it all off. Yes. For the average American that is not financially savvy, that is the best thing you should do because big businesses and people with money, they have tons of debt. They have more debt than most of us combined but they leverage the debt. And by leveraging the debt, which basically all that means is that they take on money. So let's just say $1,000. So they take on $1,000 in debt. If they can buy an asset or get that money applied to something that occurs more in, like they're making a 6% return and they're only paying 3% on that debt, they'll take out the debt. They understand the market. They understand how to leverage money. They make money work for them. Now, for the average American, we go, we get, okay, interest rates go down, we take out a loan or whatever. 
that loan a lot of times goes back into the market. So we are spenders. We are the average person is the consumer, the consumer of big business. Big business is basically what supports our government. If you look at our taxes, our taxes do not cover the government spending and what they are doing and everything they are doing and the opportunities they get while in these positions. So the government is not looking out for us. Everything is under the, the premise of, oh, this is what's good for the economy, which makes you believe this is what's good for you, for us, for the average American, for the grinders, the workers, the ones that are making things happen. But it's not. It's to make us, it's it's stimulating the economy. It's basically to get us to be like, oh, rates are going down. Like, even though you know you're struggling, it's like, okay, well, it's an opportunity. Like, you know, rates are coming down. So, we, you know, it just gets that like itch to feel like you need more debt or you need to spend. It's like the economy is not that bad. Even though you know the economy is bad, you know you are struggling. Um, and it makes us take on more debt, which then we spend the money on things whether it's another car or whether it's something for our children or Christmas is coming and we spend and what happens when we spend the money goes back to the top, right? So it is great for them because then we take out the debt, we pay the interest and then it's all profit for them. It's really like, it's a really crazy system, but basically the cuts are all about businesses. They get to refinance their loans for a lower rate. They get to take on more debt for a lower rate. They get us motivated to take on more debt at a lower rate and then we spend and give them the money do you see the cycle it's like it's crazy just like when the government gives us a stimulus it's the same thing like you know coven they gave out all these stimuluses and it's like oh you know we know we aren't you know some of you guys aren't working and you know we're doing all of this and then the reality of it is all the money i mean i watched it everybody was spending all of that money on stuff stuff and now i look around and as i drive the neighborhoods in my local area the amount of yard sales and garage sales I have never seen before. People are inundated with stuff. And it's like we, you know, it's kind of like a coping thing. It's like that high. It makes you feel good for a minute. And they love it. And they feed off of it. And so are the interest rates, in my opinion, a good thing? I mean, if you're aware of it and you understand it and you can work towards your spending, not taking on more debt, like, I think that's like, you just have to look at it differently. And when you buy stuff, does the long-term effect, like, is it worth it? No. A lot of times you end up having to get rid of it. I mean, there are people that like literally have signs on stuff that say for like free take on the curb. And even in the estate sell business where you have these seniors that are aging out of the population, it is in crazy. Like they have so much stuff. And then I'm like, there's just too much of it in the market. Like I'm watching like collectibles and different things and different listings, the value of them are coming down where you could sell an old bottle or something like that. And you get 50 to a hundred dollars. Now it's like, you'll be lucky to get five to 10. It's not even worth listing it or anything like that, but I'm going off kind of on a tally raid, but it's really to just kind of put it in perspective to what we see on an average day, like what we are experiencing and to not get wrapped up in this number game that they feed us, making us think that things are okay ask your neighbor, ask a family member, ask a friend, a coworker, like, is everybody doing great? We're all struggling to pay groceries. And it's like, they lowered, you know, 0.5. And it's just like, whoa, the economy is going good. They do all this. And it's all a manipulation tact for us. You know, just like they're like, oh, you know, jobs are, are good. And you know, it's the market's strong and Jay Powell. And it's just like, I like when you understand that all of this is just a game and it's all like playing poker with somebody and these are their poker faces and this is them making it seem like they have a good hand and that, you know, giving us confidence, please do not like just look to learn and look to understand, look to ask questions and talk to people in your life because I tell you like learning is a beautiful thing and I'm totally like going off on a sign track and I need to just reel it back in, but um, really at the end of the day, like I believe we have each other and we have community. And if we, we are the difference maker locally and, um, in our lives and just, um, not taking everything at like what face value is digging into your beliefs, digging into why you have these beliefs, where did they actually come from? Because a lot of it came from the school systems that we grew up in or whatever the narrative was at the time. And the narrative is always changing question the narrative, push back, get informed, get engaged, get involved. Um, enough of me like going off on my tangent. Um, I just get so passionate because I just truly do love people. And I think that there are so many different ways that we can make our lives better and the people's lives around us better. 
Um, hope everybody has a good day. And anybody that listened to this whole thing, thank you for your patience.